How's it going guys? John, the basic expert here. And uh, for this week's video, I thought we would do some more solo gaming. Um, and this is something I'm going to do a lot more often. Uh, you know, just because it seems like that's what people are kind of really interested in. And they're particularly interested in Scarlet Heroes, which is what we will be doing more of today. So uh, we'll sit back, relax. We're going to do some solo gaming in Scarlet Heroes. And we're going to continue with Roark, our fighter that I had used in the last video. If you want to see what happened in the last video with what he kind of explored and saw, the uh, video will be up here, the previous one, a link to it. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's see where we're at here. Let me change screens for a minute. And uh, once again, I'll have my uh, dice rolls here and uh, have our map here. And here's a character sheet for those that want to see. Um, so he earned one experience point last game. If he can survive this session, he'll earn another experience point and, uh, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. So let's play some Scarlet Heroes. So last I left, I discovered like all of these, um, places here. Uh, so we got this ruined fort, uh, for worship. We had... Uh, an abandoned fortress, and then there was an old manor here that uh, was built by pre-humans, and it was once a pri uh, prison. It was turned into a state, an estate at one point, and is currently broken and ruined. In the past, it is said that it was a spot of, of, a, of a massacre of locals, probably locals in Fakarn. So all this was generated with the random tables on in the Scarlet Heroes book. And you've been following, I've been using it for uh, world building and whatnot. So... I'm just going to continue south. One thing in particular that's interesting with uh, my setting here is that uh, Lunaris here uh, is... Maybe I'll go and check it out because I have a feeling my players will probably go there eventually. Lunaris here has been besieged and uh, by the Sultanate to the south here. So uh, the Sultanate that is from... This area here, I think he falls home. I don't remember where I. Probably gonna have to remake, uh, make it up again. I feel like it's the Dorna Darum. It might be Dorna Darum or Tel Kekrit, where he is. His his abode is, but his his forces have come up. Uh, the fort, some of the fortresses here have been overrun. Uh, these towns have been sacked, and Lunaris has been besieged and taken. There's always been in my setting kind of this war between the north and south here of the northern kingdoms, which are kind of a more European style world, and then the southern kingdoms, which are more like Arabic, Middle Eastern. And they've kind of always been at odds with each other in my setting. And so they've uh, they've attacked Lunaris. So I'm gonna see if maybe my guy can get there and like see what's going on there, and I can make some decisions uh, for my main game as to what is happening there. So I guess to give some context, uh, my players are currently adventuring around up here in Creighton. I have another group in an advanced dungeon. This is a basic fantasy game up here in this area. I have another group of players that are just doing like a city adventure here in Ardale. So they're kind of like fleshing out the city of Ardale for me pretty much. Uh, which has just been uh, TPK central over here in Ardale for that group, unfortunately. But uh, they'll learn to get hirings, hirelings eventually. So let's, let's uh, keep moving south. So um, I don't remember what... Get a piece of paper here so I can make a note about what the current uh, count is for features or for events and features. So they're both at one. You guys you guys have followed Scarlet Heroes. You know how the events and wilderness stuff kind of works. So uh let's uh let's 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 do this. Okay, so we got Scarlet Heroes up. Let's go to solo gaming and we'll go to wilderness adventures. And we're going to move into, uh, where's features? Is technically a feature here. 
So we're going to move down to this square here. Uh, we will do green. Green die is going to be uh, events. Purple die will be features. So if I roll a one in either of them, then uh, there's something there. It's highly unlikely, but... I think I said green was events, so there is an event. That's fun. Uh, let's refer to our events tables here. So roll a d6 and use the weather event if odd and terrain event if So we'll roll a d6. It is odd. So it's going to be a weather event. It is currently the dry season, I think I've established. So we'll roll 12, a 1. 1d6 days of food is spoiled. I don't know if I ever gave my guy food, so... Uh, he's... No, I never did. Eight rations. Okay, so he's at... He's at two... Two day rations now. Not good. Um, I'm gonna have him search for food in this area. Maybe so that way he doesn't have to dig into his rations hungry he does not find anything he's going to have to consume some rations for that day uh, and water as well let's uh so uh, uh, features goes up to It works better. Features goes up to two. Events is back at one. Let's roll our dice. And we are going to move. We are going to move. I accidentally put a note here. Do I get rid of it? Move our guy here. Oh, it's a note on the thing itself. <laughs> oh, well. I guess that works. You could do a character sheet with that. I'm, I'm really learning a lot about Worldographer and about like how much it can, can actually do. Um, so we're going to... Uh, well, I'm going to search for food first. And I do it so I don't have to consume any rations this round. I, I was able to forage enough. Let's... Uh, so green is... Green is events, or no, purple is events, green is features, go with that. Green is features, purple is events. Uh, so those are going to both go up by one. Features are at three, events are at two. And we've made it to Lunaris, so let's roll... They both go up three and four for events and features. And uh, let's let's see, like, is it true? Like, is it actually a siege or what what is going on right now? So I'm going to go back to my general oracles here. Um, let's do. I'm going to count this as like a D1, D4. So like one, two, three, four. That's how I've been using that. And it's not really listed on there. But, you know, that's how I've been using it. So four, yes, it is besieged. Let's roll a D20. I Very unlikely that it is besieged. So I think the table here is messed up. He, Kevin Crawford, you put twenties everywhere here, and uh, they're so those are supposed to be. Uh, I'm assuming this is four to four to. Uh, 
6, 7 to 10. So very likely uh, that it is a little typo there in, in, is that in the actual book here? Physical copy? It is. A little typo there. Look at that. Should, uh, should uh, comment that on the drive through RPG thing. Maybe he can fix that in the PDF. Uh, so it is very likely that it is besieged. And um, well, let's roll to see what the weather's like. Dry season, seven. Hot, windy, and dry. And... Let's let's see. Is there anyone around to talk to? There probably is. So I'm gonna just roll a d20. Twenty. There's not very many people. No one really wants to stop and talk. I'm assuming because uh, fortress uh, fortresses are all are all set up around, or you know what I mean, like besieging equipment is like kind of all around uh, Lunaris right here. So I'm assuming that because there's a bunch of, I mean, there's a, there's a siege going on, it seems. That, so I guess it hasn't fallen. Or did it fall? I think it's, it has fallen. So maybe everyone's downtrodden, actually. Uh, who knows? Um, is there any, any work here? I'm going to roll a d4. Well. I'm sure there's work to be done. Let's let's see. Old D twenty. Two. Almost certain. Almost certain. Uh that's weird. The this table's like totally broken right here on the yes. That's that's funny. Uh, let's, let's see who I meet. Uh, I'm going to roll a d20 to see who I can talk to. Six. So it's a human. And we will roll a d8 to determine who they are. Four. Here. D10. Two. An elderly crafter. crafter. Or beautiful foot pad, heartless mate. Uh, we're gonna probably go with a commoner, so an elderly crafter. I'm gonna kind of ask him uh, what's going on. NPC stranger, Let's roll a d12, see how he responds to me. 11. Helpful consent. Uh, what kind of memorable traits does this this guy have? Forty eight. Is a, a crafter with gaudy jewelry. Do a temperament. Fine. Precious. What are his immediate desires? Maybe I can help with it. Ninety four. Spying on a person. So I'm going to rule that uh, he needs help with spying. Maybe he, maybe he's working with, uh, he's, he's uh, someone who has been with the, the previous rulers of the city and he, he needs someone to uh, spy on those that have recently taken power from the Sultanate. That's how I'm going to interpret that. Just to kind of keep it in line with uh, everything going on here. And this is part of solo gaming. You kind of have to, you're given these oracles and you kind of, you really have to use your imagination as your solo gaming in order to sort of construct a story based on these roles that are given. So that's what I'm going to roll with. Um, I'm going to say, uh, you know, is there, is there a reward involved with this, you know? Go with yes, but. 17. Very unlikely. 
What's the butt? Failure of a piece of gear, either of the hero or an NPC. So I'm talking to an NPC. I think my gear is probably fine. But um, I'm going to say that the NPC is maybe like, uh, you know, I would give you a reward, let's say, but uh, my funds, let's say, have been taken because when the Sultanate took over, they probably took over the banks. Uh, and maybe some of his wealth is, is being held up, loot by the invaders. If, uh, if these invaders are eventually removed and dealt with, maybe he'll remember my guy. I'm going to rule that way. That's what's kind of going on here. So, all right. Uh, I guess it depends on, like, what kind of guy uh, Roark wants to be. You know? First of all, I think he needs to buy... I'm going to refill my water. I'm here in town. I'm assuming there's a fountain. He's able to definitely probably... Refill his water. And we're going to get some day rations. So let's look at equipment. Three silver pieces. So how much gold do I have? I have eight silver pieces. I'm going to buy at least two more. So we'll be at three. which will put me at two silver pieces, six total. Um, let's, I'm going to break down one of these gold pieces to 15 so that I have 12, and 12 divides rather nicely with four, so I'm going to buy four more. I'll put me at seven. Day rations, and I'll get rid of all the silver that I have. So, that looks good to me. Do I want to help this merchant who wants to spy? I guess, who am I spying on? Is, is uh, I guess, the next question um, we need to figure out here. So, let's roll a d10. We'll roll a, we'll roll a d3 here for like what what it what kind of person oh it's probably an elite or noble if it's if it's a milit if it's a military invasion let's roll a d8 two so top one here and a d10 at six a famed courtesan why would you be spying on a famed courtesan that is what is your what is the actor's relationship to this individual? Let's roll on that table here. Maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll help me. Forty-eight has blackmail. Hmm. And is is I'm gonna roll on yes because you know of course that's what it is. Is this uh courtesan courtesan? Is it of the sultanate? 16. Unknown. Doesn't know. Are you... I'm going to ask him, are you, like, answering to someone else? Are you able to tell me that? Probably need to do a reaction roll for that, so we'll roll... Uh, we'll roll 2d6. And uh, let's, we're going to do a minus one for risk of significant cost to their action. Because maybe he's given something away. Still NPC. Guy, so seven. And he's like, maybe I can tell you who I work for if you uh, give me a bribe. And, um... How much do I have? If I give him five gold pieces. I don't have that much, but let's say I offer him five gold pieces. E. Plus 
plus one, maybe. I'll just give a plus one. Five gold pieces. I don't think he likes that. Annoyance, that's not enough. Well, that's all I have. Is this something my guy wants to pursue? Well... I don't know. I'm going to pause real quick and make a note in my map of all this information because you guys don't need to see me. You guys don't need to see me make notes of this kind of stuff. Uh, and then I'll decide whether Rorok is going to do this or not. This is what I wrote for it. I said, Lunaris is besieged. A merchant wearing gaudy jewelry is there. He is capricious, so he's a little unpredictable. He's tasked with spying on a famed courtesan. He doesn't know if this courtesan is of the Sultanate. He can be bribed to reveal who has, has tasked him with this, but it will be a larger than but it will be uh, larger than pocket chain. Um, because obviously my five gold was not enough to entice him, um, even with this cheap gaudy jewelry. So there is that. Um. Hmm. I mean, shoot, why not? Let's let's have Rorik say, like, yeah, I need the gold. Like, if I'm... I'm going to ask him, like, maybe you can't pay me, but can whoever your... Uh, whoever you're working for, would they be able to pay me? Were their funds seized? I'm going to roll a d4 for that. Two. No, but... And... Unknown. I don't know. He's, oh, he doesn't know if whoever he works for can hire, can pay me or reward me. What is the but? Two. Adjustment to the physical environment, which is probably the adjustment to the physical environment, again, is the removal of the sultanate. So there's not much in it for Roark Roark if he, if he pursues this quest. Um... Well... If I find, I'm going to have Rorak ask, like, if I find anything, you know, uh, of value, will that, will, will, I, will I be allowed to keep it on my adventure? I don't have to really mine, right? Like, I don't have to share any of that. You just want me to spy on this uh, famed courtesan. Courtesan, um, like, if, if I make a little extra cash along the way, maybe pilfer some stuff, uh, that's at my prerogative, right? Oh, wrong die. Uh, I'm going to say uh, roll on yes. And it looks like um, looks like that's a a a, a, a likely. Like yeah, sure. If you want to, you want to do that. That's that's fine. Okay. Well, we'll do that then. Well, I'll have Rorik do it. And uh, Rorik the fighter will spy on this courtesan. What are his skills? Like, I need to come up with a plan here as to how City Watch, Bandit, and Sergeant. Hmm, I wonder if, uh... I wonder if he could, like, attack one of the Sultanate guards and, like, steal his, his, his armor or something like that in order to pretend to be a guard. That might be that might be the best way to go about this uh, in getting in Lunaris and spying on this courtesan, which I assume I assume is in Lunaris. Maybe I never actually asked. I'm assuming we're like outside the city right now. I haven't even gone in yet. Where, how far away is this person that I'm spying on? First of all, three, three, four. So two, five, in a day's ride. Uh, uh, 
Each of these hexes is about a day. Which direction? One, two, three, four, five, six. Five. I'll be here. They must be down the road. So they're not even in the city. Uh... It's going to be like a wild goose chase. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to come back to you, old man. I'm kind of interested. In, I'm in, in some other things here. So he maybe he kind of shrugs. Opera maybe still stands, but I kind of want to try and sneak into the city. Um, I'm going to try and deal with some guards so that I can maybe get their gear so I want to try and maybe deal with some guards here oh, soldiers probably soldiers here um I'm just going to rule, like, I'm going to wait for a moment. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, if I walk around around the outside and just sort of wait for a prime opportunity to to deal with uh, some guys, well, six guards, there's a group of six. Can I go in and take them out so that I can steal some of their, maybe their, their armor and whatnot, uh, mess with them, sneak into the city? Because I'm really curious, like, what's going on in Lunaris. And uh, so there's six guards uh, that are trying to do this. Uh, let's see if they can get my uh, skills here. So they got a plus one. So that's uh, eight. I'm going to try and ambush them. So it's a dex. So. So they got eight, seven. So they see me coming. They're prepared. So combat ensues, let's say. Uh, heroes always go first in uh, in Scarlet Heroes. So we're going to have... We're going to have uh, Rourke attack, attack one of the guards with his longsword. I don't know why the damage is like... It's, this should be 1d8 plus because of his strength. Probably been doing this totally wrong. All right, so roll our d plus four, eight. Uh, plus four is uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Plus six is eighteen. That is going to miss. I'm going to use my fray die, which is d8. See if I can. Cause any damage to any of these guys. All one hit die. Two. I think, I think one of them is killed. Double check the combat thing there. Two. One point. So I kill one. So five guards left. Uh, the other guards are going to attack me. Uh, let's go back to... This... Humans, here we go. So, attack plus one. Damage by weapon. I'm going to say they're all wielding basic d6 damage weapons so uh my ac what is my going to be at armor class three they get a plus one so plus four to the roll let's see if they get a 20 or more 18 they miss for the first guy second guy uh 15 that misses Or uh that's seventeen, that misses. Two more. That's a miss. That's eight. And that's a hit. So he landed a hit on me. 
D6 damage. Five. That's ouch. I think two to five is one point of damage. Let's see. One point. Just on the verge. So one point of damage to Roark. Never actually, he should have been here. Actually at current HP. Nine. All right, back to Roark's turn. He is going to swing his sword. And he's rolling terribly. That's a three, that's not going to hit. Roll a d8 for his freight eye. Six. I think I killed two guys. Yes, two. So two guys are killed. Down to three. Um. Let's go back to the band, the soldiers. So, plus four, do a d6 worth of damage. Actually, I'm going to do a morale check for <clears throat> last three. What do we have there? Ten. One of the soldiers is running off. Second one is running. Third one is staying. So two of the soldiers run off. I'm going to probably to get help. Not a good thing. If I don't. I'm going to probably say if I don't. I'm sure this place is swarming with soldiers. If I don't kill this guy in the next round, I'm probably going to be swarmed with some soldiers here. So let's have him attack me. He misses. My turn. Sixteen plus four, which is twenty. That hits even without his AC. With his AC, it'd be twenty-six. So it definitely hits. So a D eight plus four, three. That guy's dead. That guy's very dead. All right. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't have time probably to search each of their bodies. So I'm gonna just drag one of them into uh out of the way of, of where they're at. I'm going to uh, search their body. Uh, or So he has H2. So I'm going to look at H2. Where is treasures? H2 is Scruffy Bandit's purse. 1D6G. Three gold pieces. And 25% chance of cheap jewelry. 1% chance of one costly jewel. There's some cheap jewelry on him. No. Maybe there's a 5% chance of costly jewelry. No. Just the gold. Well, I'm going to strip him of his uh, robes, don them, and uh, hide the body. And pretend to be this guy as I'm going to try and sneak into this, uh, into Lunaris here. So, let's see what happens. So I walk up to the entrance of the gate and let's see if they'll let me in. They notice something's amiss. Maybe there's like blood on me or something like that. I'm going to use City Watch 2 plus 1 for my Constitution, or for my, no, plus 0 for my Charisma. So, 2d8 plus 2. 
see what I get. So 9, 10, 11, and uh, let's, let's do it. Like they're going to inspect me to make sure I'm on the up and up and one of their own. I get a plus one skill bonus. It's the same. How many guards are there? Five guards. Eight. They are aware of my guy. Yeah, crap. All right, so combat's going to begin again. I'm going to just attack. Uh, that's a miss. Let's uh, do my fray die six, so two. I kill two guards. It's down to three. Uh, the other guards are... Um, I'm going to say like every other round, I'm going to roll a, a d6 to see if I can get away. Like, cause I'm sure other guards are going to come. So the other three guards... 19, that'll hit. Dang it. Or another point of damage. Probably gonna have to run. Second guy, 10 plus 3 plus, it's not gonna hit. And third guy hits. Or it's another point of damage. That is going to be. Yikes. Um, well, I'm going to try and escape. This isn't going to work. This, is, this has gone all wrong. This is not what's supposed to happen. So there is a way for defying death here in the rules. Sometimes a hero is left to face inexorable doom. Rather than succumb to the lethal poison of a centipede woman or fall prey to psychic domination of the blood sorcerers, King Lung, because this has a, Scarlet Heroes assumes like a, uh, kind of oriental sort of style adventure. You can defy death. You can defy death anytime they wish to avoid the consequences of a failed saving throw or escape a situation of otherwise certain catastrophe. They also may defy death to overcome some insuf uh, insufficiency of skill. By death, the hero rolls a number of d4 damage dice equal to the character's level, calculating the damage normally for Scar Scarlet Heroes. No points. Okay, blah, blah, blah. The character is reduced to zero hit points, then they are left at one hit point, and the attempt to defy death fails. So I'm going to roll a d4, and uh, let's see, three. So I take a point of damage, and I'm able to escape the guards. I'm going to heal myself after after a combat. You're able to. I didn't do it in the last one. Should have. You are able to restore two hit points in combat, but only from wounds that were taken during that round. I think I took two, so go back up to seven. Oh, uh, man, that didn't work out. Um, we're going to rest for a day. So we'll see if there's a random encounter. Like go out, I'm going to go like outside on the outskirts of town to... Make a camp or something. There's an encounter. <laughs> this is not Rorik's day. Uh, let's go to encounters, and we are sort of in what kind of environment are we? Not urban streets. I'm gonna say plain. As I'm camping on the outskirts of town, kind of, you know, within sight of it, but far enough away where they can't see. So Attacks me. 14, which is an ogre. Oh, great. Roll a d20 here, so 20. The uh, ogre's trying to avoid a hunting local authority. And what is their opinion towards me? 2d8. Ogre comes out, bursts through the through there. Thirteen will parlay or ignore the hero if at all possible. Ooh. Dice are flying everywhere. All right. Uh, the group size four. 
We'll encounter size twice and take the bigger roll. Oh, fun. So they're willing to parlay. They're being hunted. Um, let's see. Uh, well, let's go look at the ogre statistics and see how many. How many I'm running into. So I roll it twice, take the higher of the two, both three. So three ogres that are trying to run away and not get caught. Um, got treasure there. I'm only at seven hit points, and there's three of them. Three ogres is kind of a lot. So, uh, I want to try and reason with the ogre. So, nine plus four is 13. I got to roll 13 or more. Yeah, uh, whoa, ogres, you know, uh, <laughs> I want nothing to do. Not interested in you. Uh, leave me alone. The ogres see me and... We want to eat me. Uh, didn't work. Even if I already give a bonus because they want to avoid. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I, I could give a, a decent bonus to my character. So, three ogres are not hungry ogres, probably, are there. And they don't want to get Roark. So, let's let's see what, uh, what happens with Roark here. Um... I might just try and defy death, get away from him. Try and do that. Four. Two, so I take two points of damage. Escape. One point of damage, sorry. Escape. And I can recoup it back to seven because of the rule. Can't do two because I only took one point of damage from that. I want to camp someplace else for the night. That was a random encounter for the evening. Roark's gonna heal, and um, he's had a rough time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this session here. So I don't, cause I don't want this video to get too long, which gives him another XP point at two. This brings him up to level two. What happens when a fighter levels up in Scarlet Heroes? Let's, let's look. So. I gained four hit points. I gained an attack bonus. That's it. All right. Attack bonus goes up two by one to plus two. Gives me five here. And I gained four hit points total. Which is being, uh, 13. Currently at eight. Bump it up to four here. Keep the same. I don't know what the rules are for that, but we'll just keep the same proportion there. He's going to rest anyways. We're going to call it a, a night and uh, going to call it an adventure there. So it didn't work out quite so well for Rorik. Uh... Trying to sneak into Lunaris is going to maybe be a little more difficult. I wonder maybe if I can get him some hirelings. That might really help him in trying to uh, deal with that. Maybe there's some, maybe in the next session I'll try and find some disaffected soldiers. Maybe maybe in the surrounded plains and countryside or, or something like that. There's um, in the forests maybe here. Maybe Maybe after the siege, like people fled into the forest. And maybe there's like a, you know, like a rebellion that could go on that can, that can be led from right here. So uh, that will be that will be something to ponder and deal with next time. So hope you guys like that. I'm going to try and do these solo gaming sessions uh, a bit more often and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I am going to be streaming tonight. 
So tune in for that. We're just going to hang out, talk about stuff. I have no idea what, but we're just going to hang out. And um, if you like what I do, again, like, subscribe, share. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can support right here on YouTube itself. You can check out my links in my video description below and buy Atomic Punk or Cow Punchers. That's a good way of getting something for yourself and supporting my channel as well. Or you can support on Subscribestar or Guild, the Gilded server or... Um, wherever uh or, or right again right here on youtube if you're interested so it means a lot to me to those that do you see their names at the end of videos of those that are supporting what i'm doing it means a lot to me so thank you all for watching i hope this was a fun uh video for you to kind of see more scarlet heroes and some solo gaming lunaris is besieged but uh Rark is going to find a way in we're going to find a way of getting him in uh to maybe free the city or or something we'll, we'll see so Maybe Roar can be, if Roar does it, my players there up here are kind of aware of what's going on down here. And they, there's rumors that like, you know, the, the Sultan is going to make its way up, up to the top here and that Kraden is being readied for a, a siege because it doesn't want to fall like Lunaris. So, um, yeah, we'll... It'll be, uh, maybe, maybe Rar can be an NPC for my players if they, uh, interact with the guy. So, uh, if, if, if he's able to actually free Lunaris, we'll see. See in the next game, let's say. So, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks again for watching. Get you guys. There's going to be another video on, on Wednesday this week. Uh, it'll be the conclusion of West End Games, Star Wars D6. So, check that out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you guys later. Stop.